Uh, good morning. I am Professor Irfan Shuk, and uh, may peace be upon you. This lesson is about knowledge. It's a very, very interesting topic. And you realize how interesting it is as it takes you to different aspects of knowledge. Epistemology it is an explanation of knowledge and knowing. What I am talking about is not the information. I am talking about knowledge itself. Meaning by what is our belief regarding the truth about knowledge? So we are talking about belief about the knowledge. Just to give you an example, what is truth? What is belief? What is knowledge? A very famous painting, you see. For nearly 2000 years, it was the knowledge that the Milky Way is formed not by what we know now, but it is because of this this uh, myth, Milky Way was created by God, Hercules, which when he was a baby, his father's ears, here you see, this is the father's ears in this painting, and this is Hercules, was found of his son, who was born of a mortal woman, he was a god, the mistress was a woman, immortal, named Alchemy. He decided to let the infant Hercules suckle on his divine wife Hera. This is the goddess, divine wife Hera. And reason is that he was very sad. He loved his mistress, the god, and he wanted some divinity should come into the child also. He decided to let the infant suckle on his divine wife Hera's milk when she was asleep, an act which would endow the baby with godlike qualities. When Hira woke and realized that she was breastfeeding an unknown infant, she pushed him away and the spurting milk became the Milky Way. Till today, if you stand outside on a starry night and look above, you see the Milky Way which is the concentration of stars because of the shape of the galaxy, still it is called as Milky Way. That was the knowledge which persisted for so much time, 2000 years I believe, and now it's a belief. So this information is knowledge, or this information is belief, or this information is truth. In retrospect it is say, but it changes with time. Similar is this, Galileo was sentenced to life imprisonment by the Roman Catholic Church in 1633 because he disputed, no, earth is not the center of solar system, it is sun which is the center of solar system. So what is knowledge? What is belief? What is truth? Keeping the context of that time. Difficult to say. Before answering this, the knowledge of belief, even if you see this thing at this time, you take seven men who are blind, you know this, this picture very well, an elephant is shown, one may perceive it as a snake, other may perceive it as a wall, other may perceive it as a trunk, other may perceive it as like something. Actually men, with their sensation, experiencing something physical, reaching to different conclusions, are all right. Are all the people right in this? Or some are wrong, some are right. So what is truth? What is knowledge? What is belief? You see, there is a huge body of information which is knowledge. 
obviously knowledge is information and out of this immense information there is a huge portion of knowledge which we call as beliefs which is what we believe and then out of this belief out of that the huge part of information which is truth some of this information is available to us some we will find out later there is overlap of belief and truth so this overlap is this the knowledge no knowledge is a part of these two it overlaps and beautifully defined by edmund gatia he says in his short paper title is justifies true belief knowledge wrote beliefs may be true or false as we know once it is established by evidence that a belief is true then that overlapping belief is called knowledge obviously once it is established by evidence that the belief is true then chances are it is truth but not always later on it may be untrue as investigated by perry experimented by ryan they said this thing okay when a person matures when he passes through life he experiences to does his belief about knowledge remain same or they change he said no they change in a sequence initial stage it's a dualistic perspective a person has knowledge is viewed as either right or wrong either it exists or it does not exist it is absolute in next stage the perspective become relativistic knowledge is viewed as uncertain and relative look knowledge is not fixed it is not yes or no it is relative it is uncertain uncertain because knowledge at this point of time could be same after some time it might change in some one perspective the knowledge could be different and so on and so forth and then is the latest and constructivist perspective we say knowledge is viewed as changing relative and contextual and has to be individually constructed upon pre-existing knowledge by evaluation this evaluation of information is done on personal basis using available evidence so knowledge is not only uncertain it is not only relative every person has his own knowledge so therefore when is going to going to receive a different knowledge from his surrounding then he is going to construct his own knowledge or information and that may be different in different people even if the context is same so belief about knowledge that changes from Dualistic perspective, to relativistic perspective, to relativistic and constructivist perspective. But how knowledge is found? There are two ways. One is using logic and reasoning. Meaning by one is not seeing anything, one is not touching anything. one is not experiencing anything but pure logic and reasoning can result in gain in knowledge for example our theoretical physics let's say 
in theoretical physics, it's on the mind of great theoretical physics people. New information comes to them and they tell the people and they understand it in the language of mathematics. Nothing is present at that time to confirm them by means of experiments or observations. Other is verifiable by observation or experience. Seventh stage, Kitchener and King reflective judgmental model. In fact, it tells us seven stages, and these seven stages are as one moves from dualistic perspective to relativist perspective to relativist and constructivist perspective. I'm not going to go in detail. For example, as one moves along, initially his belief is I know what I have seen. Then it then his belief changes to if it is on the news, it has to be true. Then his belief progresses to when there is evidence that people can give to convince everybody one way or another, then it will be knowledge. Until then, it's just a guess. After that, his belief about knowledge matures into or grows into beliefs are justified by giving reasons and using evidence. But the arguments and choice of evidence are idiosyncratic. For example, choosing evidence that fits an established belief. Are you seeing how that person belief about per se knowledge is changing? Then, then in this belief might become people think differently and so they approach the problem differently. Other theories could be as true as my own, but based on different evidence. Isn't it? As we are progressing, uncertainty is becoming more. Absoluteness is going away. Further upon, the belief might mature change into. It's a very difficult in this life to be sure. There are degrees to sureness. You can come to a point at which you are sure enough for a personal stance on the issue. Again, as a person's belief about knowledge I'm talking about, it changes as a learner grows because of his experiences. From Dulles' perspective, he is becoming a relative. The knowledge is belief about knowledge from absolute becoming relative. The knowledge, belief about knowledge, about information what he is getting, he becomes more unsure. He becomes more confused. In other words, he starts thinking, isn't it? Everything could be true depending upon the context, depending upon the personal experience, depending on the factors. That what is truth? And lastly, one can judge an argument by how well thought out the positions are, what kind of reasoning and evidence are used to support it, and how consistent the ways one argues on this topic is as compared with other topics. Very interesting. Now coming upon, once we have talked about beliefs about knowledge of a person, how it develops, how it metamorphoses gradually, what about self-awareness about knowledge and its educational implication? Let us discuss that. Treffer's model of skill acquisition, and by the way, this skill 
does not mean psychomotor skill, it means ability to do something well. Initially, a learner is a novice, then he becomes an advanced beginner, then he becomes competent, and that is certified, and he's working in his field. Then he becomes proficient, and then he becomes expert. And usually, the literature says it requires 10 years' time or 10,000 hours to become expert. To understand is an example. For example, let us say, you have joined a course. Okay, let us say, totally different. You have joined a program in the field of medical education. You are know us because you have joined a course as professional education. Then as you are learning during the course, you are an advanced beginner. And once you pass the course, your competency is checked by the examiners and they certify now you have acquired these competencies, then you become competent. Then gradually you start working toward proficiency and expert. And during the such courses, possibly, there is a progression about for which occurs, in which teachers, they try to bring the group into performing stage of group dynamics, motivate the students to learn, and the education activities are need-based and the need of the students. Autonomy is given to them. They become self-regulated, or self-directed learners. This is the essence of development of a learner. Interestingly, there is a conscious competent learning model. Neil Birch in 1970 he proposed four stages of competence. Either a person is consciously incompetent, meaning by he is aware of what he does not know. And once he becomes aware of what he does not know, he is a learner. He learns those things and is satisfied that now he has learned and become consciously competent. There could be another learner and after him consciously competent, then as he continues to work, he becomes unconsciously competent. But there could be another one who is unconscious and incompetent, meaning by he is not even aware of what he does not know. Other names could be a learner passes through changes of ignorance, awareness, and then learning, and then mastery. Expert and master are not a part of conscious competence learning model. It consists of four. Frequent trust with corrective feedback is a very effective way to progress. For example, if you join a course, once you join a course, you have passed this stage because now you have consciously you are conscious that you do not know, that is why you have joined the course. And this consciously incompetent, you become more and more aware of that because it occurs immediately after reality check during teaching sessions and assignment and then when the examination occurs, you become competent.
how you progress from one to another are the two wheels, clog of wheels, corrective feedback practice and as they continue to roll, one tends to move forward. Competent, then one becomes expert and from expert to stage becomes, he becomes a master trainer, a master teacher and he produces clones of himself and leaves a legacy behind. I hope this helps you in understanding beliefs about knowledge. How they mature, how they develop, how they change as an learner passes through the age. Thank you very much. Continue to smile, glow, enjoy the life. Bye-bye.